Okay, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Skagla Bones. I'm your host. As you can see today, we have a Crank Brothers egg beater pedal here. And we are going to do maintenance on this egg beater pedal. Now, so you're aware, all, I won't say all Crank Brothers, but both the, the um, egg beaters and the candy pedals are going to be serviced the same way. Now, if you have a mallet, Typically the mallet is comes in two pieces and it will pull apart <clears throat> that way in two pieces. But this, because the spindle goes all the way through the center and it doesn't have a big mallet piece, we're gonna uh, these and the candies are all gonna be serviced at the same uh, or the same way. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna full first pull out this dust cap we have here. So we're gonna use our uh, short flathead screwdriver to do this. So, pull this off, pull that dust cap out. Now one of the ways you can tell if your pedals need surfacing or not, you can kind of take a, is when they're on the bike, if uh, the pedal, let me move up just a little bit, there we go. So if the pedal spins very freely and just kind of spins around when it's on the thing, this this isn't fully 100% need service, but it does need a little bit of more lube in it. So if it's spinning too freely <clears throat> while it's on the bike, this just spinning around, 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 just just freewheeling means that the grease is dried out. So it needs some grease. Okay. So as you can see here, you you have um, a seal there, keeps dirt out, and then we have a socket there. So we're gonna go into our toolbox. And for that size, you can get a use a a small ratchet. So we're going to get our small ratchet, and I'm going to find what size socket we need for this guy. So it looks like we have a five sixteenths socket, and then one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out. An extension. So we're going to need an. I, I want to use an extension that just allows me to get in there a little bit easier. You don't have to though if you don't want to. That's kind of up to you. And we're going. To, we're going to uh, to loosen that. So one thing you want to do is take your Allen key for the other side, and then just loosen it up like this. Okay. So hold the Allen key tight. If it requires a pedal spanner, use pedal spanner, but uh, your, your Crank Brothers do not. Um, they require an Allen, Allen key. So <clears throat> other types of pedals will work very similar to this, even if they're not Crank Brothers. But now that you've got the nut off, or lay the nut aside. I'm going to get a cloth here, by the way, so I'm not making a mess. Um, my bench here, so I'm going to take put that nut aside on the cloth, and then we can pull out this here, and then you have a couple of things right here is the shaft or the spindle, as you can see we have grease on there. This bottom portion is some bushing, and in the in the back end of here you have your bearing, so you can take the bearing out if you want to but that might not need completely greased. So I'm going to take a quick gander out of here. So you have a kind of a bushing or not, not, yes, a little bit of a bushing in this side here. And then you actually have your bearing in here. Your bearing seems to be good shape but if you really want to, you can take and punch out the bearing. And I would use a soft mallet, like so. Just lightly tap the bearing from the inside like this. And as you can see, it's starting to come out there. And you can tap out the bearing and then you can 
take your bearing and you can clean your bearing off. I wouldn't put it in a degreaser unless you really plan to, to do a ton of regreasing on it. So I'm just I'm taking this bearing and I'm just kind of cleaning it off, wiping it down. Once I get it wiped down here, let me move some of the tools here. Now one thing you can do, and, and this is sometimes what I recommend for something like this, is grabbing yourself a Q-tip, like so, and just take the Q-tip, run it in there get rid of any excess grease that may be there and then wipe off. I would not spray WD-40 on these bearings because you don't want to flush all the grease and oil out of the inside of them. Now there is a tiny dust cover there. You could pull the dust cover off and repack those if you want to. I'm going to set that down for now. I am going to get, instead of using our grease gun, I'm going to get our uh, PL, PPL1 poly lube polyurethane grease, uh, which is a waterproof grease from Park Tool. I'm going to get this stuff and I am going to coat uh, the, the bearing area with this. Now, as you can see, that's pretty dirty in there as well. So what you might want to do is before you actually do that, that is take get all the old grease out. If you're worried about rust inside of this thing, some people will take and you can spray some WD-40 in there inside of that but the problem is you want to really make sure that when you're done that the I'm going to grab another q-tip here so I'm going to kind of get as much of this excess grease out of here because so I'm going to pack this with the new fresh grease The other thing to remember too is if you use a Q-tip, make sure none of that cotton stays inside the bearing housing area as well. You want to make sure that's all clean. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do for that. Uh, so I'm going to take this. You can get a grease gun and do this, but I'm not going to do that for right now because I want to use this grease. I don't want to use the white grease. Uh, so I'm going to be switching out with this grease here. So I'm going to put this all in here like so. And I'm going to put this in here as well. Okay. I'm going to set the, the, the thing like that. And then, and then this is where your hands might get dirty. because I'm going to take some grease I'm just going to put it over the bearing like so I'm going to pop the bearing down there like that now one trick that you can use is you can take this very sorry, same socket and extension off or you can use a slightly bigger one that will fit down in there if you have one that will fit down in there you can kind of take this like so put it down on your mat right there and then you're going to take your mallet and you're going to put this down in here like this or you can use the other end like this slightly tap 
wrap it in. Okay. And you don't want to hit it too far because the plastic dust cover that's in there, you don't want to damage that. So you do want to get it all the way down inside of there. Okay. So once that's in, uh, we're going to take and clean off. Kind of all this, we're going to take as I drop my, my Allen wrench one second here. So, we're going to take our spindle, and we have these you have this boot here. So, you can kind of take the boot off if you want to, and you can clean a little bit. Um, but you don't want to really damage that boot, so you want to be careful. It is replaceable. And then what I do is I take the spindle, and as you can see here, I remove all the grease off of it. And you can see the spot here where this goes in, uh, in here, and meets the bushing. Okay. And then over here, you have that small piece, which is where the bearing, the inner part of the bearing is going to sit, okay? So you want to make sure you wipe this off, wipe it off really good, clean it really good. Uh, I wouldn't use necessarily WD-40, but you could do some degreaser on it. Get it very clean. And then... We're going to take this... We're going to lay the body down like so. And once you got this clean, and you clean the little boot, and the boot ultimately just kind of sits in there at the edge. It's only there, this little boot is just a dust cover and it sits against the the flanged portion here and that's just there kind of just to protect the inner workings of the the bearing and the, the shaft uh, of the the pedal. So I want to make sure all dirt and grime is out of there. If you have to, um, what I do is I take this guy here and I get a little bit of lubrication oil, which is for bikes and tools, like that. And I put it on the plastic because this is rubber. And I, I want it to penetrate in there and just kind of lube that rubber up. So that's a little bit of trick. It's an old school trick. So I just take it there, allow it to go into the rubber, and I'll kind of re-soften up the rubber up there like so. I get that penetrating oil on there. I'm going to wipe excess off, so I'm going to kind of take the boot once again and kind of just get the excess off the internal side I'm sorry right there the internal side and the reason for that is because now I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it on shaft like so okay I'm going to push it away from where all the grease will be like that okay so the oil off, the excess oil. Now we're going to take this guy and we are going to grease this up. So I'm going to take my grease and smear it over the bare metal parts that don't have the paint and stuff. I'm going to go around the end and the threads. Some people say how much can you do? If you do extra, 
it's just going to push out through the pedal, it's not going to hurt anything. And then I go on the back side of this. I do not, I'm careful on the rubber boot to not go onto the the outer side, just the back side. Okay? So now we have this like this. I'm going to come up through it. It will push, as you can see, we're pushing out extra oil and grease. That's fine because we can clean up the extra oil and grease. Okay, now it might push the bearing out a little bit at this point. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scribe and pull off that extra grease. I'm going to kind of set that there like that because we can reuse that grease for the next pedal. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is put this in here like so. I'm going to push the bearing down into its spot. I'm going to grab the bearing nut which is here. I'm going to set it on top. Very gently start it because you don't want to cross thread that. Now, when I'm going on, I'm not going to use the extension at this point. I'm just going to kind of hold it. Sorry about that, folks. Hold it and start it. Make sure the nut goes on without cross threading anything. And then we're going to start to tighten it like so. You're going to get on there and you're going to uh, torque it down. Now, you can get out a torque wrench at this point if you want to. And you can torque this down to. Now you see how this doesn't free spin as much anymore. It's nice and lubricated in there. And that grease should keep it going for for some time to come. So now I'm going to take this extra lube. And we're going to use it for the threads for the pedal, some of it anyways. Okay. We're going to take the cap, we're going to put the cap back on, dust cover, and we're going to crank this down. By the way, on most websites for the companies, they will have the specs for the torques for these. These are made to be serviced, these bearings. And you just you tighten down the dice cap. Obviously, this is a plastic dust cap, so you want to make sure you don't hurt it. It's going to go down into the threads a little bit, and then it'll just tighten like that. Then we're going to get our wrench. And what happens, that little boot for a while will push out a little bit. And that's just because of the fact that you've got so much grease in there right now, and until it works, some of it works its way out, it's going to do that. And then um, we're going to come back over to our bicycle right there. And of course, we're just going to come in like so, making sure to properly thread it in. So we're going to go forward because this is the right hand pedal. Spinning forward, and then we want to tighten. Okay, just like that. And then 
You have now serviced your crank brothers pedals. So hopefully this has been an informative video for you guys. I'm not going to do the other one. The, the left hand pedal will be the same as the right hand pedal. It's just how you put the pedal back on the bike is going to be opposite or because they're left and right hand specific because of the threads. So that's going to be really the only difference. And that's why I just do one at a time. That way you don't get confused. Uh, but that's it for this video, folks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it was informative for you. If you, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you got any comments, put them in the comment section below. Um, and uh, like always, make sure you guys subscribe and keep writing.